Hello my friends, I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to the rock climbing channel. I'm standing here above the roofs of Enguizo, which is a small village close to Arco in Italy. And I'm enjoying the fantastic view. So this is the view, super scenic. And yeah, I'm really happy that we're staying at such a beautiful place here. Yeah, today we plan to, to go to a crack called Bus de la Stria. It's right above Arco. There are some really spectacular lines. I think even Adam Ondra was there a few months ago and also featured uh, some routes there. I think he did two first ascents, one 9B and one 9A+. We were already there yesterday. Um, I checked out a route called Conti d'Arco. It's a classic 8B of the crack. And I had two goes on it yesterday. And on the second go, I had a real heartbreak. I fell on the very last move, which is kind of an uncomfortable lock off to, to a good slot. So my goal for today is to finish off this route. I don't know if it's gonna work out. I hope so, I'm positive, but you can never know. And I will also add in some tips that help me when approaching a hard route, or at least for me, a hard route. <laughs> to start off, I will do some mobility, a standard mobility routine that I try to do as often as possible. Okay, so this was my flexibility routine. Of course, it can be customized to your own needs. So what I like to do, for example, is if I feel that I'm particularly tense in some specific area of my body, then I just um, look up some stretching and mobility exercises for this area and include these um, into my mobility routine for at least some time. And when I have the feeling that the tension is gone, from this area then I maybe switch the exercises up for some other exercises and also um, this routine is not about um, increasing your flexibility it's more about maintaining your current level of flexibility and also about warming up your body and getting into a nice flowy state for climbing now let's continue with the second tip which is having adequate food before your climbing day. So I prepared some oatmeal with fruit. So I have apples, banana and some, um, some blueberries on top and also some hemp seeds. Um, yeah, that's what I really enjoy. We made it to Hotel Olivo, the sector um, in the Bus de la Stria crack where we are going to climb today. Now um, the next tip for climbing hard routes. Uh, I think proper warm-up is really important if you would like to perform. So I already did the mobility exercises in the morning and now I think I'll warm up on another route. 
um, there is one 7B plus on the left side of the wall and I think this one will be a perfect warm-up for me. So I thought I'll talk a little bit more about the third tip, namely warming up properly. So of course there's the obvious, you can just climb a few easier routes to warm up. But I do think that it's valuable to also explore other options for uh, warming up because either there might not be enough suitable routes for you at, at a certain crack to warm up or sometimes it's also a good idea to combine a, um, a separate warming up or warm up protocol on the ground with climbing some easier routes that's what i did um, on that particular day and for your warming up routine I think, um, for example, portable hangboards are a great tool because you can bring them with you to any um, crack. Um, also, uh, rubber bands, resistance bands are great to get your shoulders warm. And besides this aspect of warming up, I think it's also worthwhile to consider the mental aspects um, of warming up. There is a broad um, range of tools such as breath work or visualization or some people like to um, listen to music, to a particular song that gets them hyped up shortly before they try their projects. <clears throat> and I do think that um, most climbers can benefit from experimenting with these tools. And yeah, I, I might do a video on this topic, um, a separate video on this topic in the future because it's a very broad topic and especially this mental aspect um, of warming up seems to be often neglected from my experience. Okay, so I had my warm-up go now in the 7B+, Plus, which is called Mango Inn. Um, it was not not a bad route, maybe not my favorite one, but also uh, not a bad one. But anyway, I, I feel relatively warm now and had some rest. And next I will give Conti Darko uh, my first go. Let's see how it feels. So here I am on the intro moves of Conti Darko. The first third of the route is definitely the easiest part of the route. It consists of two for climbing in a steep terrain on very positive holds. <laughs> so very fun type of climbing. And I did not uh, leave the quick draws on this first half of the route the day before. So I had to place them at least for this section. In the upper half the route was luckily equipped and in this section I just try to be fast and efficient in order to save as much energy as possible for the more demanding sections which follow and soon I will reach the first really good rest where I will shake out for about half a minute um, it's a right knee bar between these two fers, which makes it possible to um, get pretty much completely fresh again, I would say. And I don't know if you can see it, but I definitely was a bit nervous when climbing because I always had this second to last or last move in my mind at which I fell the day before. and. Somehow I kept telling myself, don't repeat that, don't fall at the last move. And that's obviously not ideal because you would like to climb um, being in the moment and focusing on what's in front of you. And I have to say I did not succeed completely in that, but still I think I managed to keep myself together and uh, climb reasonably well. However, I still think that I could have been a bit um, more relaxed in my climbing at these sections. But that's how it is, especially when, when filming yourself, you will hopefully find something to improve on. 
I think no, nobody's perfect and um, yeah, you can almost always find something to improve. So now I'm leaving this rest, this right knee bar. And the next section is a little bit um, harder than the intro section. It's, um, it's a bit more crimpy. The holes are not, not small by any means, but they do, do get smaller than on, on this first section. And also um, they are <coughs> facing outwards. So you have to bump with your hands a few times and it feels a little bit like you cannot release a hand uh, comfortably. That's also why this section is a bit more pumpy. And now um, I'm bumping again with my left hand on this tufa. Then right hand bumping again, left hand. And this tufa, although it's quite good, it somehow felt super slippery. So you will see now my left elbow bends while clipping. And it was actually quite hard to clip this quick draw, which surprised me a little bit. And now this um, next section, the holes get a bit bigger again, but it's still somehow awkward to climb because you have this big tufa feature right in front of your belly and it makes the footholds hard to see. But luckily another really good rest is coming up. And at this rest, I will take my time. I will shake out in order to um, be prepared for the last section of the route, which is definitely the hardest section. So this is now the rest. I sped the footage up a little bit, otherwise it would be quite boring. <laughs> um, now I'm leaving the rest and the first moves directly after the rest are not that hard, which is nice. <laughs> Sometimes it's hard to um, leave a rest if there is a really hard move right after the rest. Now I am clipping the second to last quick draw. And so now there is one more right knee bar that I found, but the position is not very comfortable. And that's also why I am not staying here very long. So now I will go for a right hand pinch. So what I'm also observing is I'm chalking up quite a lot. So maybe it would have been more efficient to chalk a bit less, but yeah, that's also just a detail. Um, now I have this left hand under cling to clip the last draw before the anchor. The anchor is just behind the lip that you can see on, on top of the frame. And the right hand hold that I'm holding right now is quite painful. You first get it as a decent edge and then you have to turn your hand into an undercling slot and this undercling slot is quite painful. Now I go left hand to an intermediate and bump again. And now um, follows the crux sequence basically with this really cool right toe hook on this rail. Then I match the toe hook with my left foot to reposition my feet um, then a bump around this lip to a decent hold. Here I'm doing some micro shaking with my right hand before I reach this relatively good crimp from which you have to do the long lock off move um, which got me the day before. But luckily this time I stuck the slot and then you can pretty much clip the anchor. It worked out, I'm super happy. Um, to be honest, I was quite nervous. I don't know exactly why. Maybe because I fell on the very last move the day before and I really didn't want to repeat that. And this brings me to the last tip for climbing hard routes, which I try to um, live by, which is staying optimistic and positive. Um, for example, yesterday I, I was, of course, a bit mad at myself when falling at the last move. But then I tried not to, to be angry the whole evening or something like that, but more to see the positive side, to tell myself that um, climbing to the last move of this route was quite a good achievement for my standards. And yeah, of course, I don't always succeed in, in turning 
things to the positive side or seeing the bright side of of failure <laughs> but i think if if one manages to do it it can be also very beneficial for performance and for overall enjoyment <laughs> We are now in the middle of Arco, or to be more precise, in the riverbed of the Sarka River. So here one can see a little bit of the river. Um, but yeah, not very much water right now. This brings me to the end of this vlog. I hope you, you liked the impressions from Italy and also the tips for climbing hard routes. Let me know if you have some comments about them, if you would like to add something or if you have any questions. I'm always curious how other people approach their projects. Anything more to say? Like and, subs subs <laughs> like and subscribe. Eat more gelato. <laughs> yeah, eat more ice cream. Be happy. Have a good like time. Like and subscribe. And like and subscribe. All right. Bye. <laughs> Yeah.